we have to because it's a cool paper talk about dopamine oh yeah okay so i can <laughs> Let's we just... were gonna we were gonna um i was gonna give you a quick uh summary yes yeah, a quick summary yeah. of uh uh what's the title of the paper uh, i i think we called it uh, a distributional a distributional code for value in dopamine based reinforcement, reinforcement learning yeah. yes so that's another project that grew out of pure ai research um, a number of people at DeepMind uh, and a few other places had started working uh, on a new version of reinforcement learning, it, the, which was defined by taking something in traditional reinforcement learning and just tweaking it. So the thing that they took from traditional reinforcement learning was um, a value signal. So the, at, the, at the center of reinforcement learning, at least most algorithms, is some representation of how well things are going, your expected um, cumulative future reward. And uh, that's usually represented as a single number. So if you imagine a gambler in a casino and uh, the gambler's thinking, well, I have this probability of winning such and such an amount of money and I have this probability of losing such and such an amount of money, the that situation would be represented as a single number, which is like the expected, the, the weighted average of all those outcomes. And uh, this new form of reinforcement learning said, well, what if we, what if we generalize that to a distributional representation? So now we think of the gambler as literally thinking, well, there's this probability that I'll win this amount of money, and there's this probability that I'll lose that amount of money. And we don't reduce that to a single number. Uh, and it had been observed through experiments, through you know just trying this out, that that, rep that kind of distributional representation really accelerated reinforcement learning and led to better uh, policies. What's your intuition about, so we're talking about rewards. Yeah. So, so what's your intuition why that is? Why, why does it- Well, it's, an, it's kind of a, a surprising historical note, it at least surprised me when I learned it, that this had been tried out in a kind of heuristic way. People thought, well, gee, what would happen if we tried? And then it ha had this, empirically, it had this striking effect and it was only then that people started thinking, well, gee, why, wait, why, why, <laughs> wait, why, why is this working? And, and that's led to a series of studies just trying to figure out why it works, it, which is ongoing. But one thing that's already clear from that research is that um, one reason that it helps is that it drives uh, richer representation learning. Um, so if you imagine, imagine two situations that have the same expected value, the, the same kind of weighted average value. Um, standard deep reinforcement learning algorithms are going to take those two situations and kind of, in terms of the way they're represented internally, they're going to like squeeze them together. Because the the thing that you're trying to represent, which is their expected value, is the same. So all the way through the system, things are going to be mushed together. But what if in, what if what if those two situations actually have different value distributions? They have the same average value, but they have different distributions of value. In that situation, distributional learning will, will maintain the distinction between these two things. So to make a long story short, distributional learning can keep things separate in the internal representation that might otherwise be conflated or squished together. And maintaining those distinctions can be useful in, um, in when the system is now faced with some other task where the distinction is important. If we look at the optimistic and pessimistic dopamine neurons. So first of all, what is dopamine? And oh, right. why is this <laughs> why is this at all useful to 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 think about in the artificial intelligence sense? But uh, what do we know about dopamine in the human brain? What is what is it? Why is it useful? Why is it interesting? What does it have to do with the prefrontal cortex and learning in general? Yeah. So, well, this this <laughs> this is also some a, a case where there's a, a huge amount of detail and debate, but one, one, one currently prevailing idea is that the function of this neurotransmitter dopamine resembles a particular component of standard reinforcement learning algorithms, which is uh, called the reward prediction error. So I was talking a moment ago about these value representations. How do you learn them? How do you update them based on experience? Well, if you if you made some prediction about a future reward and then you get more reward than you were expecting, 
then probably retrospectively, you want to go back and increase the 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 value representation that you attached to the to that earlier situation. If you got less reward than you were expecting, you should probably decrement that estimate. And that's the process of temporal difference. Learning. Exactly. This is the central mechanism of temporal difference learning, which is one of several kind of, you know, kind of back the sort of the backbone of our armamentarium in, in RL. And it was it, this connection between the reward prediction error and dopamine was uh was made um, you know, in the in the 1990s. Uh, and there's been a huge amount of research that, you know, seems to back it up. Dopamine may be doing other things, but this is clearly, at least roughly, one of the things that it's doing. Um, but the usual idea was that dopamine was representing these reward prediction errors, again, in this, like, kind of single number way, that uh, representing your surprise in a, in, with a single number. And in distributional reinforcement learning, this this kind of new elaboration of the standard approach it's not only the value the value function that's represented as a single number it's also the reward prediction error mm -hmm. and so what happened was that will dabney uh one of my collaborators who was one of the first people to work on distributional temporal difference learning talked to a guy in my group, Will Ker uh, Zeb Kurth Nelson, who's a, a computational neuroscientist, and said, gee, you know, is it possible that uh, dopamine might be doing something like this distributional coding thing? And they started looking at what was in the literature, and then they brought me in, and we started talking to Nao Uchida, uh, and we came up some, with some specific predictions about, you know, if the brain is using this kind of distributional coding, then in the tasks that Nao has studied, you should see this, 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 and this. Uh, and that's where the paper came from. We we kind of enumerated a set of predictions, all of which ended up being fairly clearly confirmed, um, and all of which leads to at least some initial indication that the brain might be doing something like this distributional coding, that dopamine might be representing surprise signals in a way that is not just collapsing everything to a single number, but instead is kind of respecting the the variety of future outcomes, if that makes sense. So yeah, so that's showing, suggesting possibly that dopamine has a really interesting representation scheme yeah. for for in in the human brain for its reward signal. Exactly, that's fascinating. It's just that's another beautiful example of AI revealing something nice about neuroscience, potentially suggesting is, possibilities. Well, you never know. So right. <laughs> you know, the minute you publish a paper like that, the next thing you think is. I hope that replicates. <laughs> like I hope, I hope we see that same thing in other data sets. But of course, several labs now are are doing the follow up experiments, so we'll know soon. But it has science. been it has been a lot of fun for us to you know to take these ideas from AI and kind of bring them into neuroscience and and you know see how far we can get.